Well, welcome to a little video that I would like to put together today for you. I'm going to walk you through a hand drawing of a costume sketch. And you'll notice that what I'm showing here first is I have um, a compiled group of pictures on one page. Um, I'm imagining that this is for a character that I've created for a project that I'm doing in class. And I've taken the time to analyze that character, to think about the qualities and traits of that character, the age of the character, the situation the character's in. And I found some options for clothing head to toe. I thought all the way about accessories, makeup, hair, everything. And the reason I wanna have several options is that normally I would be talking to a director about this. So I would want to give them choices of things to pick and choose from, not just one option for each thing. So I've labeled it. I've um, included all of the elements there. And I'm gonna be using this figure here as um, the clothing that I want to draw, but I'm gonna use this figure here as an idea for the pose that the character is going to be standing in. Now, very often, I will do a separate pose research to find the stance of the person. I just felt like this particular pose was energetic and it was going to be lovely, but it's not unusual to have a separate page with a separate, just a figure that you like standing in the um, position you, you appreciate for um, showing the character in the clothes. So, I'm going to be using her here as my reference for the figure. Now, moving on to what kind of uh, paper I'm using. Now, costume sketches can be done on any kind of paper. There's no particular um, rule for it. Um, I tend to like to use um, Bristol uh, vellum. It's card stock. It's basically, you know, the thickness of like a greeting card. This one has a smooth um, surface, a I'm sorry, vellum surface. It, the, you can get um, a type that is in smooth surface. The vellum surface has just a little bit of a roughness to it, which I really enjoy for colored pencil. So again, paper is completely up to you how you want to, what kind of paper you want to use for your costume sketches. Um, it usually depends on the medium. I'm going to be using watercolor gouache and uh, colored pencil when I go to, to color this in. Today, I'm just going to be showing you how to draw the figure in this in this short video. So getting started, You'll notice that I've made some marks on my paper and I'm hoping you can see them all. I have actually used my ruler and I've drawn a center line right down the center of my paper. And then I've also gone to the edge of my paper and I've measured down an inch and a half at the top and an inch and a half up from the bottom. Normally I would make these lines a little bit lighter but I wanted them to show up for you today so they're a little darker than I would normally do. The reason I do this is that I want to make sure that my figure stays in the middle of the paper because I am going to be including some labeling around the figure. And if I were just to start drawing a head and I drew the head too big, by the time I got to the feet, I could run the risk of having my figure fall off the paper. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that our figure is a human proportion that's usually a seven and a half to an eight head figure. We don't wanna use an anime style figure or any kind of extreme style because an actor is going to be portraying this character. The only time you'd ever do something like that is if you were actually drawing a like a like an anime character, like a I don't know, like a costume that has you know for a convention or something like that. Most theatrical and um, you know live entertainment uh, uses or film, you're going to want to draw a human natural proportion uh, figure. Uh, also, fashion is different. Fashion has an elongated you know, figure. They use a, like a 12 head figure. It's very, very skinny and tall. Okay. So looking at my figure, I'm going to want to, using her as my reference, I know that I need to have seven heads, seven and a half to eight heads. So I would want to start out with a relatively small head because I need to fit seven of them on there. I'm using from the top of her head to the bottom of her chin as a measurement. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to my sketch paper and while looking at her on the side here, I'm gonna to start to think about drawing her head in pretty small. I'm gonna start by using the volume of the skull, and then I'm gonna find where the chin would be, and I'm gonna draw it almost like a, um, like a hot air balloon. That's really kind of the shape. You've got the ball of the, the balloon up here, 
and you've got the basket at the bottom, okay? And again, stay small because you can always make it slightly larger, but if you get too big, you're gonna end up not having enough room, okay? And also reference lines here on her face, her face is tilted just slightly. So she's looking just ever so slightly at an angle like that, her head's tilted at an angle. You'll also notice that if I were to draw a line from her shoulder to shoulder, that that's also tipped. Shoulders are always the opposite of the hip. So if the shoulders tip this way, the hip would tip the opposite way, okay? So now we're gonna to start to think about the volume of the body. If the shoulders are tipping this way and the hips are tipping this way slightly, then we can start to think about that as where her foot that's holding her weight is. Her foot that's holding her weight is this front foot where the low hip is, okay? Um, actually, I think maybe it is the, the back. It's actually probably the back foot. It looks, it's hard to tell because her feet are in front of each other. So the high hip and this foot is moving forward. So I think that that's all high hip is usually where the, where the weight is being kept in the body. Okay. And then this leg is moving forward. So this, this leg is in motion here and her knees are pretty close to each other. So I usually like to give myself the knee. Now you're noticing that I'm making all of these lines here. This is my eraser here. My eraser is as much a drawing tool as my pencil is. I'm going to be putting pencil down and I'm gonna be removing pencil. Both of them are equally important. So don't ever feel scared of putting pencil down because you can always erase it, okay? If, you're, if you draw with a pretty heavy hand, which I tend to do, you can always just use a harder lead pencil, which will give you a lighter line to start off with. That's easier to erase, okay? So then I also like to give myself the bust points here. The bust points are usually kind of in line with what's going on at the shoulders because the bust is closer to the shoulder. Um, and then maybe also maybe where the belly button is. I think her belly button's probably here and her end of her pubic bone is here. So giving yourself some reference points where things are on the body, really, really helpful. Then you can start to think about drawing in the volume of the body. Slowly getting a sense of, her, it looks like her waistline is kind of, tipped up a little bit here. And of course, this is not the dress. I'm gonna be drawing this dress on her. I'm just trying to get the sense of her body in, okay? And then her neck comes straight down off of her head. So you never wanna have the neck inside of the headlines. They need to come down off of the head, okay? And then you're gonna have this shoulders tipping down. This arm, the inside of the arm, the elbow is level with the belly button. So that's probably where her other elbow is here. Her arms are here. And then her arms hanging down at her side here. And then her other arm is slightly away from her body holding the dress up on this side. Okay. And then we can get maybe just a little sense of the, of the way that the hand is right here. Okay, so we've got this pretty straightforward po uh, pose. Her body is slightly twisted this way. Just a little bit, you can kind of tell because we see more of her bosom on this side than we do on this side, okay? So her body is kind of turned to us, okay? And her other shoulder slightly up, the shoulder slightly down, okay? And now we can start to think of the volume of the thighs and the hips. So we've got a little bit of a hip here, her hips tilted a little bit more out this way. And then now I like to start at this point to think about the volume of the dress. I know that her feet are gonna end right about here this is where her foot is here. This is where her foot is on this side, okay? So the volume of the dress. I like this dress here. It looks like it's hitting below the knee. This one's above the knee. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna think about just the shape of this. Hemlines tend to smile at you. So we want it to smile just like it is in the shorter version. It's smiling and she's in motion. And so I'm gonna kind of give that sense of the, the swing of the dress. And here it is on this side. And then she's got a little bit of it in her hand here. And it's tipping up and it's swinging out here. So I've just given myself a little bit of the volume of the dress. The skirts are similar, so I'm not, there's really not a whole lot of difference here. What's different on this dress is the bodice is different. So now I'm gonna turn my attention back over here to the body because I do wanna get the sense of her calf um, in here. And then this, of course, this calf is just ahead of this other one. 
I'm gonna take a second and get that this foot in here. This foot is tilted a little bit. And again, the volume of the calf, you can see it here, the meat of the calf is higher on this outside edge and more on the inside edge, lower. So if you were to draw an oval, it would kind of look like that, that kind of shape. So you're thinking about the body in geometric shapes. You're breaking it down. And then her foot's facing us a little bit more than what I have here. I'm gonna just short, we'll shorten that a little bit because we're just seeing just the, barely the toe of the shoe kind of sticking out of this, okay? So now that I've got that much in, um, sorry about that, I'm shaking my table. Uh, I can go ahead and start getting rid of some of the lines that I don't want. So I can start to get rid of some of these lines. And this is where a good, um, like an old makeup brush, or maybe probably better to use a new makeup brush or a, an inexpensive paint brush that's brand new to uh, get rid of some of this graphite and eraser dust that we don't really want to have on our drawing as soon as we get some of these lines out of here. Okay, I don't need this line anymore. I don't really need her leg lines anymore because they're hidden by her skirt. I don't need her hip line. I don't need any of that. Okay. So I'm gonna get rid of some of that stuff. I'll probably also get rid of this down here. And I could probably get rid of this down here. Okay. So I've got a brush I can just dust this off with. shaking the camera so much. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a little bit of that erased away and we can always erase more later. So now I'm gonna start to think about getting some of the detail in on this dress. I um, have this dress over here that has a slightly higher waist. So I'm thinking it's probably, feels like it's right about here. And then her, there's a lace inset here that does something sort of like this. And then the neckline of the dress comes down. It's kind of an open neckline here because it has a little lace inset here as well. And then I can get that little lace inset in there. And now I can start to think about the sleeve. Now I'm not sure, cause I, I do like her hair. I think I'm gonna go with this shape of hair on the sketch. Um, so I'm gonna kind of use that reference for um, that shoulder here. I do wanna get, I think of, when I think about hair, I think about the inner shape around the face, what is revealed of the face. So this is a shape here. And then the outer part is its own shape, okay? So as I'm thinking about where her forehead is here, I could start to kind of get you know some of that in there. I don't need to go crazy with it because I'm going to be getting a lot more detail here in a minute. Um, but I do I can get that sort of in there because I think that's going to help with that shoulder line. Me trying to figure out where her shoulder line is, and then I can start to think about okay, well if it's coming down like that, and then here on this side if it's coming down, it kind of comes away from her here, and then. Maybe what I want to do is, is have her hairstyle kind of like the drawing here. And then I'll just erase later kind of what's under it. So I can kind of get just that, just the outer shape of it. Because I don't need to worry about the texture of hair, her hair right now. I just need to get um, the contour of that going. And then I can get that, what I don't want in there anymore, erased. Okay, and my brush again. You can see how like a, a little paintbrush would be real handy because this is I gotta I got to brush vigorously and I don't want to keep knocking my camera. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'm thinking I might have to turn my camera off and start over again here in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get um, some of this other detail in. It looks like there's a lace inset at the shoulder as well. 
And then for her flutter sleeve, I'm gonna go ahead, it looks like it comes all the way down here and it would flutter a little bit away from her body. And then over on this side, I can kind of see what it's doing. Again, it's right at the, right at the elbow. Okay, so I can get that in. And then I can start to think about adjusting where the waistline hits the hip here. I think that's gonna be better there. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get her arm in. I wanna get this shape of her arm in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going in there too. Okay. That got a little low. shape of her hand. This bone is here. Okay, I can get some of this out of here now. Okay, and then let's see. All right, and then her other hand is here. Okay, I'm kind of happy with the shape of that. I think the volume of her arm is a little higher. Okay, a little bit of a readjustment. Yeah, you can always readjust. Okay, and then this I feel like it's got a little wonky. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about the shape of the skirt. Again, it's my interpretation of this, so it doesn't have to be exactly like the research. I'm just using it for reference. And here we go. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I do with her face. And I'm going to bring this research over to here, okay? So I'm going to find about where I think the top of her ears are, and that's going to be where her eye line is. Her nose is going to be right about here, and then her mouth is going to be... Actually, I'm going to bring her chin a little bit lower. I feel like I was being a little bit too worried about the size of my face, and I got her a little bit too small. And then her, the center of her mouth, Okay. A face is a series of small lines. Do not feel like you need to, and, and don't, because it's going to look weird, feel like you need to um, draw every eyelash. It's, it, it's an impression of the face when you're doing a costume sketch. And so you want to think about where, where are the most important elements. That's going to be where the pupils of the eyes are. You're going to want to get those in pretty early on. And then you're going to want to think about her the shape of the shadows on her face, how those shapes of the shadows create the face, okay? So trying to, uh, you know, illustrate it in a way where it's going to be so detailed, it gets really weird, okay? So now we want to also think about maybe where the chin is. I'm going to adjust this down a little, just a little bit for her, and it's so tiny, guys. You really just want to take your time with this, and you don't want to um, do too much. It's better to have less of a detailed face than to feel like everything's about the face because it's really not. It's about the clothes. That's the most important part of a costume sketch is getting the clothing looking right, okay? So get the face in there. Make it a series of small lines. It, for women, always give them an arch on the eyebrow. For men, keep the eyebrows a little straighter across. I think also I can kind of just make her hair a little bit higher. That helps a little bit too. Um, and then for women, I tend to do a little bit of an indication of a lip like that. And then that's about all I'm going to do until I start to color it in. I'm going to leave some of the detail for when I start to put color on this. And I can also get a lot closer when um, 
I don't have this camera right in my face so I can kind of like um, get in there and, and really make it look tighter because right now I'm so far away from it because I don't want to put my face right in the in the way of the camera. Okay, so I'm just getting a little bit more detail as I go. Um, again, the nose can just be a series of shadows. If you feel like you need a little bit more contour, um, you know, just take your time. Think about, you know, like for me, I know that her hair was kind of covering her eye, but I kind of adjusted that so I didn't have so much of the hair uh, covering her eye. Okay. Here I feel like this line got a little bit far away and that her eyes may be just a little bit too far apart. So I might just adjust that over a little bit and adjust this one here, make it a little darker. just got a little bit too far apart here. Okay, here we go. That's making me happier there. Okay, that's coming together. So you see how I'm just putting down the tiniest bit of graphite to get the face to form? So again, you know, I'm struggling a little bit because I'm in a weird position. Normally, I don't draw like this with the camera right here. But I'm feeling like this is getting a little closer to what I would want it to be. Okay. Okay. So that, let's see, let me get our little feet in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out a little bit. Let's see if I can get her feet in there. Can you see her feet? Let's see if we can see her feet. Yeah, I think you can just barely see her feet. Let me see, maybe I can adjust it a little farther over without crashing the whole thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna put an indication of her feet in so I can have a little bit more of a definitive line there. Here we go. And you'll notice mine doesn't look exactly like it. Like she has her legs a little further apart than what I did on mine. Um, totally fine, right? Totally fine. And then I can go back in and I can say, okay, I want a little bit more of a contour line so I can really see it when I start to paint it with my colors. Okay. Again, I'm not going to worry about the texture of her hair until I start to, you know, really start to uh, put the paint down. Okay. And... Remember that, you when know, I'm gonna do another video to show you the coloring it in, but um, remember that you are going to obliterate a lot of your line when you start to um, color this in. I'm also gonna do a little bit of an indication of the, the maybe the pleats on the dress as it's, or the folds on the dress as it's moving. It's kind of nice to get a little bit of that movement in there. So yeah, so there's a, still a lot of lines that I can get rid of, but I think that for the most part, it's looking pretty good. And I'm going to be pretty happy with that when I go to cover it in. All right. That's it for now. Part two will come up soon.